Hello, hello, welcome to another live website reviews. Hello, bonjour, hola. Today, actually, I know all of these countries. Yasu, that's Greeks. Oi is Portuguese. Ciao is Italian. Dobri day, that's Slovakian. And I know why is it there. Konnichiwa is Japanese and Guten Tag is German. Okay, so welcome, everyone. I've already say hi in the chat. We've got a lot of people watching today, which is fantastic. Welcome to the show. My name is Petr Kihi. I'm also known on the internet as I hate tomatoes, as the guy who hates tomatoes because I really hate them. And I'm a front-end developer. I write tutorials. Re I, I record courses on my YouTube channel. So check them out as well at I hate tomatoes. Welcome to the Awards Academy. The Awards Academy actually grew a lot over the last few months. There is plenty of talks and live workshops and recorded workshops and courses. So definitely check out awards academy, awards.com slash academy. Great resource to learn and connect with other digital professionals. And one workshop that I wanted to highlight today is the live workshop that will take place next Thursday and Friday by Brett Frost. Okay, this will be focusing on creating and maintaining successful design systems. And it give it will give you insights on how to convince your clients, your team or your bosses to actually implement some design systems. And as you know, they're very important if you want your app to be maintainable, scalable, and if you want it to look consistent. Okay, so Brett will give you some tips on how to convince all these stakeholders how to convince them to use it, how to implement it, and which tools to use. So definitely great workshop. And today is the last day of the pre-sale. So definitely don't miss out. Check out the registration page, which is in the description of the YouTube video. And of course, while you're on YouTube, and you should be watching on YouTube, I think this is not streamed to multiple platforms. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are close to 69,000 subscribers. So definitely with your help, we can get over the 69. So make sure you subscribe. You can also go to the history of all the talks and watch our past shows as well. Of course, as always, it's not just me talking about websites. I've got special guests today, special two guests today. And the first one, while they're joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. The first guest is a guest that I already had the pleasure to work with or review a few websites before. And it was the first ever live website reviews. And my special guest is Chiara Aliotta, Italian living in Greece Islands. So hello, Chiara. Welcome to the show and introduce yourself. Hi, Peter. It's so nice to see you again and such a great opportunity for me to share advice and thoughts about the websites they will review almost every day we as a part of the jury member um, so I am Italian as you say then I live on a Greek island it's still summer as you can see um, I'm the co-founder and our director of uh, the collaborative agency until Sunday and among many things I do I also own a small e-shop where my husband and I create patterns printed on t-shirts um, stationery and other beautiful things it's called the pattern tales and on the island I also take care of the gallery and bar we we own it's called Plastico. So if you ever come to Greece and you visit Syros, you are very welcome. It's a uh, coffee is free for the awards community. So pass by and say us hello. Wow. I'll <laughs> definitely take that on because that sounds amazing. Looks like you own the whole island. Um, not really, but yeah, I'm quite popular. Let's say that. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome, Kiara. Good to good to have you back. Good to have your insights on Thank on the you. website we'll be talking about. So. Definitely great to have you back on the show. And my second guest is Denis Lomov, creative director at Red Collar. Also, I had the pleasure to all already review a few sites with Denis. So Denis, welcome to the show. Take a few seconds or a few minutes, however you want to take, however long you want to take to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, Peter. Uh, yes, it's the second time for me as well. Uh, I really like the first or one. Uh, the review with you uh, and uh, I hope this one is going to be better 
So I'm a creative director and a co-founder at Redcrawler. Uh, and now I'm streaming uh, right from the Russia. Yes, and uh, we have uh, uh, lunchtime right now. So hope everyone is already not hungry. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Nice to Fantastic. Welcome to the show, you. Denis. Privet, Privet, actually. I should say Privet to Denis. That's in Russian. And Yasu to Kiara because she lives on a on a Greek islands and uh, ciao if, if you take Italians as well. But yeah, I, what I like about these live stream, they, they live, they, they real people. We talking live to people on YouTube, connecting from different parts of the world. And recently I actually tuned to some live events and I was quite disappointed. It was all just played videos and then maybe someone talked between videos for a minute. It wasn't really live and I was disappointed, but today we are live. That's a proof. So if someone, if one of us drops out, that's just a proof that it's life. Okay. Hopefully it's not going to happen. All righty. So as you know, we always take one, two, three or multiple websites, but today we have the website of the day that we will be a website of the months that we will be taking about. So we will take a little bit longer just to talk about one website, but I think it is a special website that deserves the attention. Okay. And from when I think we might have the creator of this website actually in the comments on YouTube. So we'll let the team behind the scenes figure out whether the creator is there, but we will be talking about the 2-c.earth, okay? From Jinkui Fan. I'm trying to pronounce it Jinkui. And of course, if she's in the comments, please correct our pronunciation. But this is a great website we will be talking about. And... When I firstly saw the URL, the 2-c.earth, I actually didn't even want to click on it. It felt a little bit, a little bit, um, I don't know, just, the, just the, the format of the URL is not something I would click on. So I actually made the good decision. I went in and found this great website that we'll really, we will be talking about today. And here are some highlights that we will be pointing out. Of course, it's a nice web experience. The visual content is beautifully presented, some, some storytelling, some content, written content that stands out to me as well. Some clip art and some cool scrolling animation. Of course, the sound, storytelling I've already mentioned, some geolocation specific to where you live. There is a different content presented to you. We'll talk about the typography and of course the color palette. Okay, so that's the plan for today. Here is the technicality behind the site. 97 person or 97 out of 100 it's not person it's just how how quickly the site loads i know i'm not sure actually it loaded a little bit slower on my computer but we'll we'll go with the 97 here and of course if you want any of these slides i'm sure the team will post it under the description as well so you can you can download the slides and just browse through it if you like and here, let's go, let's, I'm going to share my screen now. And first thing first, of course, I will reload the page. Making sure that we are talking it, talking about it from the start. And this is a loading screen. And I want it first, maybe, maybe give Kiara a chance. What do you think about the, the loading state, loading screen, the, the things we currently see on the site? Mm, okay, well, I actually at, at the beginning, I didn't know if there was anything to click. I thought there were uh, links well, until I saw probably because when I load the loading percentage was hidden in my screen, I, I saw in a smaller laptop. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's fine. It just took a little bit long. I have a connection which is I mean, it's not terrible, but it's a um, high connection, but not that um, that good. <coughs> So it took a little bit longer to load. So in fact, it's still loading. Is that right for you too? It mm. is. Uh, we are it connected. Is already, it's just, it just okay. finished. It, it says click anywhere to. Exactly. Yeah. Enter. And then you don't understand. I mean, I wanted this to actually, once it's loaded, to just bring me to the page, not to click. But it's yep. fine. I mean, it, it's okay. Just a minus, but not really minus, really. Okay. Until you your Dennis, your your input on the on the click to actually enter the site. What, what's your view on that? Uh, actually, uh, I don't think it's uh, really a uh, nice decision 
because uh, a user wants just to see the content and not waiting for this uh, some words uh, on the screen uh, but uh, I, I know why uh, did they do that uh, because uh, they wanted to enable sound on the website so you can do this without clicking somewhere and it's just a uh, hack to uh, not say enable sound button to make some icons and other stuff so they just said uh, just click anywhere and we will enable sound on the website and everything is gonna be with our music and our uh, sound around you so I think it's a hack, so it's okay, but not a really. Okay, uh, I didn't, I didn't well, actually think solution. about it being a hack. I thought it's more just waiting for everything to load and then let the user to get in. But yes, you're right. I, I would prefer if it just loads and shows me the content, but also because it's so beautifully presented website once you inside, I feel this is a little bit underdressed and could a little bit more tell what's inside of it because some people come here black and black and white text just floating around like that maybe they would not even click and leave so fortunately for us and fortunately for quite a lot of people everyone clicked in got in and saw the beautiful page and beautiful content inside of it so what's what's the what's the next thing that we see kiara what can you talk us about the design of the first initial mm -hmm. sort of hero section Yes, I actually, when I enter, well, when, what we see here is uh, uh, we're already inside a specific town, but usually um, the first thing we should, should see, it's a selection of five different places. I don't know if it needs to be reloaded, but that's fine. And then the user is exactly, that's the specific page. And we are already projecting to, um, yes, to the different places. So this website, looks like a, a traveling website uh, for the way the way it looks the way the images are presented the way it, the images are created the story that says inside the the inside each page and so you have this feeling like okay oh interesting i'm gonna travel to these places so it, it just looked like a national geographic thing but then you discover there is a twist in the plot so, um, which is not visible at the moment. So I really like the immersive, um, immediately immersive experience you have when you, from black, you go into full screen image. So that's amazing, I think, and it's very well used um, and very well presented in my opinion. It just, what it's annoying me is that underneath text that is still moving on, um, that's something that I, I would like not to have. It's just distracting. But that's, again, it's me, it's my personal choice. I wouldn't just have that in uh, yep. and page. I think, I think actually while, while you were talking about how, how we got to, I, I don't know how I got to the inner page because you're right, when you, when you load the page, it goes from the, from the initial click to enter page. And then I actually think there was, there was a video playing that, that showed you this narrative of the documentary behind sort of leading what's inside of the site, which, I don't know, maybe it's because I've looked at the site multiple times and it just went to that page. But yes, there is a nice video explaining that you can skip, which I like. And but actually it was so immersive and the, the sound of the you 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 write the, the National Geographic. It's sort of the documentary in with a sound that feels like uh, like what sometimes I watch these National Geographic uh, documentaries and I actually fell asleep because it's so soothing sound. And that's how it felt. I watched through it. And because it was so immersive, it sort of drags you into the story. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's where I think we skipped that initial video, but I thought it was a nice touch to it as well. Your, your view, Dennis, on, on the initial menu and sort of the, the, the design of the initial hero section. Uh, uh, actually, I like it. Uh, yes, I remember that video uh, that we can skip if we don't want to uh, watch it. But uh, it was really immersive. Uh, and after you click uh, the black screen, uh, you see this. Uh, not 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 right now. Yeah, uh, but uh, you can see it, and uh, it's uh, quite nice with a really nice uh, videos and sounds. And then you see the home page. Uh, presented as a menu so uh, you can navigate with uh, five uh, within five pages so uh, it's a really minimalistic approach and I really like it and also I like the way uh, 
the pictures appear on uh, when you hover over the links. So uh, it, 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 it looks smoothly uh, and uh, it works really great uh, with this contrast. Uh, you can see just a black screen with some captions uh, and then uh, a bright image uh, to the whole screen, almost whole screen. And it, uh, it, it, it impresses you and it uh, just uh, nice. So yep, I, I like it I as think. well, and and of course from the visual and sort of animation way, I I like how it sort of swipes swipes from one side, but then when you move away, it swipes the other way. So it's not just showing and revealing, but it's actually swiping it and revealing it from the other side. So I, I actually like that, and also that the active active things is popped up and sort of full fully visible, and everything else fades out, so it stands out really a lot. And of course, because I'm in Australia and we've got some people watching from Australia, let's go to Great Barrier Reef and see the page transition. Nice page transition. What uh, what's what's your view on a page transitions, Kiara? Hmm. It's uh, okay. So it's a, of course it's a very nice again. It's again an immersive experience. We understand we get into another level of the website. And it's clear because there is a, a movement of the image. So it's like we zoom in, fly inside this page, landing really on this page. And then, and then you, the first thing you're going to get is a, a small button under, on the right, which is pulsing a little bit, very slowly. So it's not, um, and on the top, on the corner, it says present. And then you start to understand that something's going on. So, or something, needs to be revealed. Um, I had to say that the first thing I did was scrolling down um, because there are some balloon tips appearing. They say scroll down for more content. So that's the first thing I did. And I didn't realize there was the bottom, the bottom, uh, at the bottom right, there was this button that actually is revealing another layer of this page, another way to see this page. So I want to mention something that if you skip the video, you will never understand till the end what this website is about unless you read the text or you start checking around. So, um, and we haven't said yet because it's all about climate change. And the way it's built, it really gives you the idea that it's, a, as I told you, a traveling website, but it's about climate change. So by using the button, the button on the, on the right, bottom right, we are going to see what it means climate change in Great Barrier Reef. And uh, it's sort of, it's sort of this, is, this other layer of reading the page and the content of the website, which I found amazing. And again, it's a small hack or a very nice trick, um, I guess, um, uh, which I discovered, I mean, by talking to you guys. So, um, so yeah, I really like the layout is very simple of the, over the page. There's nothing very complicated to be honest. And I think the images are just the treatment in Photoshop. Uh, and it's interesting because it's a different treatment for each location. So that's also interesting to see and to, to show to the audience if they want to, to, to see the difference between uh, the pages. Yeah, one thing. So while we're in the Great Barrier Reef, and you touched on it, uh, it's it's the side. The whole side is about the climate change and how we can prevent and uh, help it as well. So one thing from the UI perspective, I actually firstly I was looking for the main menu. How do I get back? And uh, it's it's of course the logo to that gets me there. But maybe maybe more specific specific way to go back to this home screen because I was looking for it. I couldn't find it, and also this. To, when when you were right, when the sound starts, you can mute it by clicking on this little icon in the top left corner, which I, I completely missed because it was quite tiny. So mm -hmm. uh, what's your yeah. view on the details pages? Uh, Dennis, it's sorry, Dennis. Okay. <laughs> I'll go to yes, another Peter, channel. I'll go uh, to Ho Chi Minh. Oh, hi on. Oh, yeah. I, I, just, I, just, I just wanted to mention some uh, things, uh, small details. For for example, uh, when you see at the logo, um, 
during the transition to, to another page, you can see um, that it changes to loading. So it's a, a nice detail uh, to see that uh, you're loading another page, uh, not using uh, other place for it. So it's just a uh, very, uh, very nice uh, small detail. Uh, about this page. Uh, and also, uh, one thing that I uh, didn't realize how to uh, navigate with this website. So yes, I agree with you. Uh, it's a, a small problem with navigation because you can see just a, a logo type uh, and a small icon with a dot and a circle uh, in the left, right, uh, left top corner. So uh, I didn't realize that it's just a uh, mute or something with uh, the sound. So I thought maybe it's uh, just a menu or maybe it's just a uh, backlink. So uh, actually I thought that it could be uh, a backlink. So when you drop into the page, for example, this one, uh, and you can just uh, click there and go back to the main home page to the menu. So, uh, but, uh, it's just a small detail and uh, I don't think it's a big problem for this website and a uh, user uh, learns how to navigate uh, when, because uh, you see uh, some changes with logo. Uh, so uh, it's not so native uh, to navigate through the logo all the way, but uh, I think you can learn it and you can just uh, after a couple times when you click on that uh, dot may, dot icon, uh, you can just uh, somehow you, you realize that uh, logo is the main thing to navigate with this website. Fantastic. Yes, I, I agree as well. And also there's another thing that I wanted to ask Dennis because uh, we asked Kiara about it, is the slider to reveal the second part of the of the page that describes the different part. This is the this is the present and you're revealing the future. So some people actually in the comments and uh, I think because we're proving that this is live. So I want to really answer some of the questions or some something that people mentioned in the comments. And also there is Victor Louis Costa in the comments that is a very good developer that I know from the interweb. So use this time to connect with him as well. And we'll talk about him a little bit, a little bit later. We'll talk about, we'll talk about him a little bit later. So I wanted to ask you, Dennis, what do you think about revealing the different, the, the future and the present with the slider? Uh, actually, I like this uh, effect. I like how it realized, uh, how it developed. So, uh, and I like the hints uh, that you see when you just enter this screen. Uh, in the left bottom corner, you see, uh, not right now, they are hidden because you already got how to uh, navigate with it. But uh, there are some hints uh, to understand what is uh, this circle with uh, arrows is about. So, uh, and it, it, it really, uh, it's done really well. Uh, and uh, I really like uh, the colors and I really like uh, that uh, in every page and every different page, they uh, use uh, different um, effects uh, on the images, different uh, colors, different, uh, some negative uh, pictures, or maybe just uh, uh, blurring or something like that. And uh, on every different page, they are uh, not the same. So it's uh, nice color, uh, nice colors, nice pictures, and uh, the effect is realized really, really great. I like it. Nice. Yeah, I, I like it as well. I think I've seen it on a different sites where only a portion of the page or maybe a hero banner or a product image was treated with the sliding and showing image before and after, but to see it on the whole page and reveal two different views of the same town in this case, it's very unusual to, to see it on the whole, whole page. But yes, I think it's a very good use of this interactivity to see see before and after. So if we don't change this, the, the first initial page for the people that joining now in, of course, this site is about the climate change. Currently, this first page shows the story, how this place looks today and what you can do when you visit it and when you drag it 
it shows the place in the future. And if we don't change our habits and we'll keep going the way we're going, then it will turn into something else. So it's showing past and future in this nice sort of sliding way. And I like it I like it as well. So that's that's cool. When we go all the way to the bottom, when we go all the way to the bottom, I think there was location specific. Okay, so there is, we've mentioned already that there is a lot of data behind the, behind the site, behind the research of how, how we actually impacting these places. And one interesting thing was at the bottom. So Kiara, what do you think about this piece of uh, functionality and uh, content on the site? Wow, okay, so this is probably uh, what I would call like uh, a twist in the plot. So you may think, what, am, what can I do to help this place uh, to, to, to survive, to be as it is, to preserve it? And then you may think like maybe I can help with some by going there or maybe I can help in many other, in, in, I mean, by traveling to there, be a tourist or see how I can engage with the community over there. And then it says they're actually going there from your location. In this case, it says Melbourne, but in my case, it says Athens. Um, you actually, you actually becoming part of the problem. And, and that's like, a, 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 I will call it like a plot uh, twist because we have a very specific way of navigating the website. And then you finally understand that this website exists for a very specific reason, which is take action. So taking action is not just by going there. You can donate to come to uh, places, you can read some books, you can donate some to some charities. They're actually already working in these places. So there are many ways you don't have to be in person there to help. And, and it, I think it's very, very nice uh, in the way it's built because it surprised the, the, the user at the really end. And actually, it's not a traveling website. It's uh, actually it's a website built to be uh, to build awareness around climate change. And the fun, the thing that I would like, I, I did, and I know I was probably very nasty to do that. It was that, that I pasted and copy paste the website uh, domain address to a website that is called um, websitecarbon.com. And I noticed that actually the website, this specific website is uh, six, uh, dirtier than 65% of web pages tasted. It actually producing a lot of, uh, a lot of carbon emissions. And uh, every time we actually visit this page, we produce 1.41 gram of carbon um, emissions. So, and I was thinking that it would be great if uh, why we design websites that actually are meant to be, uh, to build uh, climate change and awareness around climate change, we also become part of this, that solution. So we don't create even further problem, let's say. So be aware also that also by creating websites, actually we, uh, we also contaminate, we, we are part of the problem. So, I, I, of course, the website is great, and I, it was just me testing, and, and I want just to say that many times when we build websites, we think that we should do everything to make it the impact, but what is the impact we are, we are doing in the real world, like the world everyone else lives? So, and so one extra thought probably to add to this little, uh, to this website, uh, or every time we build a website. Nice. That's fair enough. It's fair a good, enough. good, good insights. Good insights. And, uh, and of course, of course you, know, you know, every time we do any website, any we website. build anything, we we contributing to the whole situation. So I think the, the main purpose of the site is to raise awareness and get people talking about it and show them a few actions, how they can help it, help the current situation. And just by us talking about this website, we actually helping the situation because people start talking about it, people read the information, the take actions, that the section that will get to it. But uh, yeah, I actually like the touch of this uh, location specific content because it, it's rela related to me because I'm in Melbourne, but if Dennis visits this site in from Russia, then he would see a different statistics and it, if, because we're traveling from different parts of the world, so we are affecting it in a different way. So what's your, what's your view then is on this location specific content? Uh, when I first time saw it, uh, I was surprised uh, uh, because uh, at the end of the page and then you just uh, see these clouds and uh, oh, uh, 
uh, they got my location uh, and they calculated something for me. Uh, it's uh, really uh, so. Uh, so uh, but I, I I think it's a great uh, end of the page uh, because uh, uh, we we're not talking about just a traveling uh, and when we're talking about. Uh, the climate change. So uh, the end of each page uh, is uh, this uh, screen uh, that uh, calls to action. You just uh, see this button, act now, and uh, it's pulsing. So uh, it's, uh, it's saying you just click here and uh, do something. So it's really nice, but one thing I want uh, to uh, notice that um, when you see the home page, uh, there are five uh, uh, regions, five links, uh, and after, and when you just scroll through the uh, one of them, uh, you see uh, really nice, really great content, really great narrative. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, I would like to to see some links to the next page, not just uh, take action, but I want to see them all. I, do, I don't want to uh, go back to the main screen just to click logo. I just want to uh, have some features to navigate uh, from this part of the page. So th that's, a, uh, that's a point that I want to talk about. Fair enough. I, I agree 100% with you because I, I did the same thing. I went down and then I was looking for the main menu. How do I get to the five? locations but i think it's a great point at the at the bottom of each pages have a list maybe of the four other locations that you can quickly go to and if you decide to act now and click on the main call to action but i think yes there could be it could be improvement for the whole flow of navigating because the pages are quite long to be honest there's no way to quickly go up to the top so to have some sort of navigation at the bottom would uh, make it easier to to navigate for the people one thing that uh, I wanted to ask Kiara especially is the is the typography because I know you into fonts into into this sort of font selection. So talk me through a little bit of what do you think about the choices of fonts on this side because I'm more a front-end developer. I know how to include font on the page, but choosing fonts for me is just to go into Google Fonts, see what looks good, or do a little research. Someone helps helps me which fonts to choose. So I want you, your insights on what do you think about the typography for this specific site? So I, so the choice of the uh, Sun Serif web font, which is uh, it's a gro gro grotesque uh, web font, um, very similar to Helvetica. So it's, it actually looks familiar to me at some point. And um, I, I'm not, I wasn't very big fan. I think it could have been used more sophisticated uh, Sansari font. But again, it's a simple approach and it was and that was great uh, for the website. It's just I don't think it much that, that great with the Garamond, which is used for the inside pages. So there is a mix of uh, a very uh, magazine style uh, usage of the typeface like uh, uh, typeface over the images or typeface big used for display numbers. There are different levels of reading the website. So there is uh, there are also different level of size. So you can actually, um, you are able to scan very well the, the page, even if it's very long as you, as you said, but not that long because anyway, most of them are images. So the text is uh, laid in different levels. So there are different levels of reading it. The typography, I really like the Garamon choice. I'm not a very big fan of the grotesque web, um, uh, sans serif typeface. I think it's a little bit weak as a font and not really memorable. Um, but there must be a reason behind it. So it doesn't have anything to do with legibility uh, because it's quite legible. The only thing that I would like to mention is if we go to the, um, to the action page of uh, the website, um, yes, in that page. Okay, so for some reason, I really wanted this page to be more uh, still keeping me into the wow moment somehow. 
it's a like um, it's a, it doesn't it's, it lives like a I mean it looks like it's been designed like a second thought or kind of or maybe all the effort went to the main page but really this is the page where user needs to actually act and do something and it's not that appealing and it sh as it should be so if you go to action and if you talk uh, you click talk about it uh, the links or anything that it's actually bring me to do the action, it's very tiny and uh, almost impossible to read. If you go to books as well, if you go to charities, they say donate now, but it's, uh, I don't know how many points is, but it's a very, very small size. I mean, this is the moment where we actually working for conversation. We are asking the user to finally be the protagonist, not just the viewer. And, and I thought that, okay, we, it could have been done a little bit different. We, we, it should have been the same level of engagement that we had on the other pages. And this is where also this font, the grotesque is not really working well, in my opinion, because it's just blunt. So the page is simple, it's organized well, but the font is not giving any extra. So it's like, wow, we traveled so far and now <laughs> we just land in and it's, we don't know what to do first. Um, I wanted this page to be more engaging because this is the page for conversion and it didn't happen. So that's the only thing that I have to say about typeface. So always make sure there is enough contrast and especially for action, especially for the final part of uh, where actually we have to think what we want the user to do. We want them to donate. So that's my last stop. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters what you do in between, but it matters that the user actually complete the final action, is convinced that he has to actually donate, participate, be part of uh, the solution, and not just be here watching the website, I mean, looking at the website. So, yeah. well, if you, that's we, it. We, you, you point out the issue no, with uh, the, 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 the uh, calls to action not being prominent and maybe this page a little bit blunt. So what would you would change you on change this page on specifically to make it pop a little bit more, to keep it more in line with the mm -hmm. other pages? Yes, yes, so just a little bit more, just to keep the wow uh, effect that we had at the beginning. Of course, I mean, the website is amazing and now we are really going picky on every li little thing. So uh, Jing Chi has done a, an amazing job. So and doesn't have anything to take off. But just if we think to build a new project that is about charities and about taking actions, don't forget to about the action, the final step that actually is keeping uh, the website as uh, in the mind of the user. Like, uh, and also what's the, what's the final thing we want the user to do is um, participate, is do something. So um, take indeed action, so yeah. Yeah, good point. What, what about you, Dennis? Do you have any insights or any tips on the typography or any likes? Do you like it? Do you don't like it? Do you agree with uh, with Kiara? Uh, yes, I agree with Kiara, uh, and uh, I really like the typography on this website. Uh, actually, this is an amazing website, and when we decided to uh, talk about it in this review, uh, I was uh, a little bit scared about it because it's uh, it's done really nice and I thought uh, there is nothing uh, that we can discuss in uh, other ways. So it's just uh, the, the only thing we can do about it is just say that it's amazing, it's uh, quite nice, it's great. So uh, and now we're talking about some really small details and uh, I, I think it's uh, really, uh, it, it could be helpful for the next works of uh, Jinchi or other uh, guys who are watching us. So uh, the thing I want to say about typography is that I really like the contrast. I really like the huge, huge, massive letters, huge, huge massive captions, uh, and then really small ones or with some descriptions, with uh, some texts, uh, and uh, the contrast between uh, the captions and between the texts are really enormous, uh, just, uh, and it works so well. So it's not, uh, you, you can't uh, see that it's not really nice. Uh, sometimes it's just a magazine. Yes, it's, it looks like, uh, whoa, nice caption, uh, that's 
looks amazing. And then uh, you see just small texts and uh, they are really nice combined with this uh, huge captions with these huge uh, headings. So uh, I, I, I was uh, really excited about it and I really want to say uh, thank you for designer of this website. It's a really great job. Nice, nice. And uh, I, I must add to this as well, obviously, so the c correct pronunciation was Jing Chi, if I'm not mistaken. Jing Chi. Yes, Jing Chi was it. Well done. I think it was one of her one of her first few projects. And, uh, you know, if someone can do this at the start of their journey, then of course, I can't, I can't imagine what she would be able to do in, uh, in, in a few years. So really impressive to, to be doing sty sty styles or websites of this caliber, this early in her career. So very well done. My, my, and I've looked over, over websites over the last few months, I, I looked at a lot of websites. And one thing that this website stood out for me was the content, like starting from the video, starting from the National Geographic style sound. It just drove me in and I dived in more into the content and I don't really look too much at the, at the font sizes and everything. I just, it just drove me in. A, I, I was actually reading more on this website than any other websites we maybe reviewed in the past. So I, I, I don't know what was it, but the site, the, the content of the site just spoke to me more than most of other websites I looked at. You know what I mean? I don't know what was it, if it was the initial video that drove me in or or the pictures. And I visited a couple of these uh, locations too. So for some reason, I was more curious to figure out more. And then, of course, I figure out how the site works. What is it about, about the climate change? But there is something about the content that just spoke to me more than 90% of other websites that I've reviewed over the last, last few months. So to the content creators, to whoever did the content of the site, really well done too mm. any any anything else uh, on the written content uh, Kiara what do you can think of yeah I wanted to tell you what I think I kept you on the website for so long and I think it's the great storytelling behind the website and the content and the curation of the images and I'm, I mean I've done different talks about storytelling on the web we think that it's easy but actually it's not and I'm very happy that you're saying that it kept you on going and going on different pages because actually that happened to me. And I thought that is the storytelling that is behind it. So the user is immersed into this video with a very soothing voice. And there is some curiosity about what is the future. If you're just a little bit aware of what's going on around us in the world, um, you want to know what you can do differently. So it's already creating some kind of curiosity. And then when you enter into the page, you are projecting to what is the reality now. So the reality is a beautiful place and we can travel there as we saw at the end of the page. But then when you over with a clip path and you, you over the page, you are projecting these two in this utopistic, but maybe very close reality. It's a parallel reality. And I really like that because it really gives you the idea that this is a parallel reality, it can happen anytime. And we can do something about that. And at the end it's telling you that you're not just a viewer, you actually can really do something with and again, it sends you to the action page. So it's a, it's a very well-built storytelling. And, and again, be, for being a degree project website, and it's the first project, I think it's a, just spot on in many ways. Um, so yeah. Fantastic, good. And uh, next, next talking point that I need to bring up, and uh, of course, as I said, I was so, usually what I do, and. I mentioned it before that I'm a front-end developer. So I go to websites, especially on these awards websites, and I look at the, I actually inspect the code and I look at how it was created. And this was one of the sites where I actually did not do that because I was so, I was reading the content. I was curious, okay, what, what, how can I help? What, what is this? What is this uh, different locations? How could it look in a few years if things don't change? And I, for, for some time, I forgot about the inspect. I forgot about the technicality of the site. I didn't really care about that. And so, as I said, that, that really, and that doesn't happen to me often. So from the content point, 
Yes, really, really well done. And uh, I wanted to bring up one thing then from the technical perspective is the smooth scrolling. Then is what do you think about sites using sc smooth scrolling? Do you like it? Do you don't like it? What do you think? Do you think it, it adds something to the site? Uh, it's a nice question, Peter. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the smooth scrolling is uh, really a nice thing when it's uh, uh, great design and uh, when it fits uh, to the project. Uh, so it's not for every single project uh, in the internet. So uh, if you wanted to uh, use it, uh, you should have a really big reason for it because uh, uh, smooth scrolling, uh, in this case, it just hides uh, your navigation bar, scrolling bar. So, uh, but it uh, helps you to feel something more about this page yeah so it's just about uh, some new experience some uh, immersive things uh, and you can just scroll it and feel uh, that everything is so smooth everything is so beautiful uh, so for this case i think it's okay but uh, it's a nice decision yes but uh, if we're talking about uh, smooth scrolling in general so uh, i think uh, you don't have to use it on every website because uh, it, it it adds some problems with mobile versions uh, it adds some problems with people who uses uh, keyboard uh, for navigation uh, so uh, and uh, it's not uh, even work on every devices uh, uh, there are some troubles with it some issues so uh, and uh, for the many websites uh, there is no reason for it so it's just a, uh, it's just a feature uh, that uh, sometimes uh, the website uh, doesn't need it at all. It's just need to be uh, well scrolled with the system scroll bar uh, and without this stuff. Uh, and what we like to do uh, on if we want to use something like smooth scrolling in our agency, uh, we. Uh, just simulate the really uh, the real the bar uh, scroll bar and uh, underneath uh, there is a smooth scrolling so for 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 the user for the end user it's just a uh, like a system scroll bar but uh, underneath underneath uh, in the code uh, there is a uh, our own engine for this uh, smooth scrolling uh, stuff so uh, I think you, we, we could use it uh, in some ways, but we should think about it twice or maybe third, maybe three times. Three times. Maybe you, you yeah. didn't say it twice convincingly, so maybe three times we should talk. We should maybe think about times. it before implementing. <laughs> and uh, what, what about you, Kiara? Do you think the smooth scrolling adds to the experience of the of the browsing of the site, or you think it's absolutely unnecessary? What's your view? I think it really works well for this website. Um, I have, before you mentioned, I didn't even know this because I didn't have any real problem navigating it, but I guess it could be a problem for many other projects. And it adds something because, again, we are talking about immersive experience. So you don't want technical aspect of the website to be inside. And I perfectly understand. I'm a designer sometimes, like, really, do we have to have that on the page? So I perfectly understand sometimes when usability and functionality uh, just don't match with aesthetic or, uh, you know, needs. But again, um, in this project, it's just fine. It didn't prevent me to navigate the other page to other pages. It didn't prevent me to scroll down. It was just fine. But as Danny said, not for every project. So just evaluate yeah. when it's when it's really something you want to sacrifice in the navigation, especially in this usability of the website. Fantastic. I actually like it on this specific side because it's only five pages, very visual, very sort of big, big content, big elements on the side. And I think it smoothes out a little bit of the scrolling down and that's, that's a very, very cool effect. And also what I think from a technical perspective, it's quite challenging to actually keep the two pages in sync because what there is there are two big containers sitting on top of each other and you smooth scrolling and then you're revealing one or the other using the clip path so that would have to be quite a big sort of technical job to keep it in sync and make sure that the slider is revealing the other page and 
So that from a technical perspective, I think that's really well done. And on this side, it really works well. So that's perfect. Great insights. Thank you, both of you. And now we will start taking the questions from you watching on YouTube. The first one is from Jessica for Dennis. Okay, so this is specifically for Dennis. How important are side projects for an agency or free freelancer? How important are uh, side projects for an agency or free freelancer? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Jessica, for this question. Uh, I, I really not, uh, like it. So uh, if we're talking about side projects for an agency or freelancer, so uh, I think uh, they are really important in some way because um, when you work in your just normal workflow, uh, everyday routine, uh, you need to uh, bound uh, to uh, to break the bounds just to uh, make something uh, extraordinary, to make something impressive. Uh, and side projects uh, are really uh, great stuff for the things uh, where you can uh, do some creative things, where you can implement everything you dreamed of, uh, every single features every single effect so or maybe some uh, thoughts about uh, navigation or designs so i think uh, if you have time if you have time for it uh, you, you you should take it and you should uh, do them are really nice because uh, i know many agencies uh, and our agency as well uh, do some works just uh, as a side project yes so uh, we have clients we have really busy times uh, and uh, just sometimes we need to do something for ourselves just uh, to make a really nice uh, website and to express our emotions and uh, to say something to the world so one of the projects uh, we won awards with it it was say whales uh, when we talk about uh, the problem of uh, uh, whales and that uh, the next thing we were partnered with Greenpeace about it. So, uh, but uh, first it started with our own projects for ourselves just to make something that we want to. So I think uh, it's a nice, nice if you have time, but uh, you don't have to do, do them. Uh, when you don't have any time for it because uh, to have rest and to feel good is a really important thing for your health and for everybody uh, so uh, don't work at night and just uh, do it when you have time fantastic great answer thanks for that dennis uh, next question is from gordon so hang on and uh, yes do you this is for kiara do you design before or after you've acquired photography elements and where do you find photography for design? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, it really depends. For clients' projects, it's very difficult sometimes to gather all the materials. I mean, you're really chasing them sometimes, so it's, um, it's, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, for other clients who are more photography based and they already have a lot of materials, what I usually do is uh, going through the thousand pictures they have and do a very a big creation of the images so that it really fits the content and the quality of the website, uh, like in, in the, like Jean Chin did for her website. So creation about colors, about quality, then lower them in so they are okay for the website, lower the quality so they are okay on the website so they're not so heavy and so on. When I don't have images and I want to suggest some images to the client, I, okay, stock images are um, one way to go, but never use on um, the website, to be honest. I hate that. I usually say, let's go for illustrations and I prefer drawing rather than having stock images on a website. Uh, or again, to show your idea, the concept, there is also on Splash, uh, which is also a great resource you want to use and want to check. And it's for free, very high quality pictures. Some of them are, um, they are, I think they're royalty free, but you had to mention the copyrights of the photographer, of course. But um, they're also very nice pictures you can actually use. And they don't feel so fake like stock images. They're more, 
like still they have some kind of emotion. So, so yeah. And uh, to again to answer your question is, uh, I try to have everything on my on, on, that I can before I design. So text, uh, photos, logos, uh, colors, everything ready and already filed in my uh, in my own computer. But if it doesn't happen, then you had to go through um, resources, which could be, or you had to be very, very smart. Like, we don't have images. Can we play with some background? Can we play with some videos? Can we play with something that is abstract that maybe convey the message anyway? So I try to be smart sometimes because clients are very difficult and not all of them are providing the right resources all the time. So, yeah. Perfect. Great answer. And the next question is for Dennis. He's actually getting a lot of attention in the chat on YouTube. And uh, the question is from Max saying, what type of research do you perform to understand how good UX is or is it not necessary for this kind of site? So do you think there is a lot of research in terms of the UI on this site or is it just purely about the content? Uh uh, thank you for the question, Max. Uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, the similar case or about this case, uh, so I don't think we uh, should do many researches about the UX uh, user experience. Uh, so it's all about storytelling and content. So uh, you should uh, do a really great research about it. So it's uh, just a pr uh, promo promotion website so it's not uh, about uh, many people gonna use it it's not about uh, just a service or something like that so uh, in this particular case uh, I think uh, the designer uh, should uh, should do a research in a way of uh, immersive experience of how to present some photos how to make uh, it more uh, readable it's uh, more impressive for, to uh, to explain this problem to the audience uh, to show some highlights uh, and uh, to call to action for uh, for this uh, particular page or particular uh, event so I, I think uh, in this case uh, we have to um, we have to think about UX, of course, in every website because it's a really uh, big part of it, and it's everything about uh, user experience. So, uh, but uh, I think uh, there is no need for some researches. Uh, but we we should uh, use some really uh, nice UX patterns. So uh, we should uh, we should not um, come make it. Uh, complicated. We should it make simple, uh, as simpler uh, to read this content, to make some impression on our users. So that's what I think about it. Nice, nice, nice. Great answer. And uh, I've got actually, there's a lot of questions. I don't know exactly where to take the next ones, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be wrapping it up anyway. So the next question, I think we can, we can all three answer starting from Kiara. And the question is actually from someone from Twitter, J2P from Twitter is asking, what are the key features you look out for when judging? So I think this is a generic, a generic question, not related just to this specific site, but when you're judging, when you come to the judging panel where you have websites to judge, what, what are you looking for specifically, Kiara? So uh, as a judge, we have very specific things we need to look at. So um, the first thing we look at is the design, the general design. What I consider, I have my own list of things, which I don't have with me, but I can tell you more or less. What, so when I think about design, I think about how uh, nice is immersive or how it conveys the message, how actually um, works in terms of uh, typography and uh, readability, contrast, uh, use of images and all that. And then we have the usability part. The usability is all about uh, exactly what Dennis just discussed, like how are we using any UX pattern? Are we reinventing the wheel, the wheel? So we are making the user going around and around to find out where, how to go back to the first page. So all this comes to the usability. Then we have the content. It's all about the written words. I had to say that when I see uh, English that's not spelled right, 
even if it's a side project or a degree project, it already makes me feel uh, very like uncomfortable. And I know this myself because I'm not a native speaker, so sometimes it's always good to have people to check your website. But content is also about how we convey the message. Are we able to convert through words, through buttons, uh, the website and the user to do actually the action we, uh, we aim them to do? So it's all about um, the content itself and how, and I also consider that as a part of the storytelling. Like, I always like to have a very nice and smooth navigation on the web. I don't want to jump from one page to another one. This is disruptive unless it's wanted. And then you have, it has to be justified somehow. Is the probably the message you want to actually create that very dissatisfied uh, feeling. Um, so it's a, it's a, there are many things that you will look. Also sound. Sound, it's also very important. When I have difficulties to find a button to switch off the sound, this is very, very annoying. And uh, in the case of this website, we had some difficulties. The sound, of, however, it's very nice. It wasn't in, intrusive somehow, so it was okay if I didn't find it the first time. But there are some websites that when I open them, they're like, Poof. you're like, oh my God, oh my God, you're already like scared because it's so loud, the sound, and you are like, trying to find the button, the button just to switch it off. So again, these are the things we actually look all the time and then with different levels depending on the website. In the case of Jin Chin, I didn't look at the UX. I thought that was a mostly uh, and very immersive experience. So I wanted that to be different for me. In website, there are for normal people, I mean, for people who actually are not looking immersive experience, but they're trying to actually do a task then you had to look really closely to the UX. And so usability comes always first in that case. Good, good, good. Thanks, Chiara. That was a great answer. And the same question for you, Dennis. What are you looking for when you're judging uh, the size on awards? Uh, the first uh, thing I look at uh, is the uh, overall general design. So uh, how this website looks and feel. Uh, so it's... Uh, if it's not static, if it's not um, well designed, uh, it makes a really bad impression for just uh, when you open it. So it's the first thing, the first impression. Uh, if it's okay, then I go uh, through it and I, uh, I look at some uh, UX patterns, I look at navigation, how it is done, uh, is it okay for uh, for user or for me to navigate with this website. Uh, uh, the other thing uh, I look at uh, is typography, uh, grid, uh, images, uh, effects, transitions, uh, all these uh, details. Uh, and uh, the main thing is the, the goal and this, uh, what is the purpose of this website and how it solves its business's tasks if uh, there are some of them. For this specific website, uh, there is no business tasks. It's just a, a promotional page. So, but if we are talking about some service or some uh, corporate website, so uh, there are some business goals, and we need to uh, take a look how they are solved on this particular website. So, uh, there are many details, and uh, it's just. Um, uh, the composure of them, uh, all the things together, all the things together uh, are making impression on, on the user. So uh, it's not uh, just about some uh, points in your checklist, just this is okay, this is okay, that's not okay. Uh, it's all about the experience, yes, user experience. So uh, if something is wrong, but something is really made great. If it's not really good usability on the website, but it's a really immersive experience and you just uh, flying through the whole universe and exploring some things, uh, it's gonna be great because it's not usual. It's not for everybody, but it's uh, something new. And on the words, I think it's really uh, main part of this uh, community, uh, of our community to highlight some things that uh, that are breaking the bounds that are making something new so i think uh, this 
type of things, uh, unusual navigation or something like that, uh, can be a feature for some websites. So in some in some cases, uh, it's not going to be really useful or really with good usability, but it could be a really great experience, and I really appreciate this. And uh, some people, some designers, do this in really nice way. Nice, perfect. Dennis, thanks for that. And I've got one more question from someone. I really think we should we should keep answering these questions because they keep popping up. So I don't want to dismiss them. So the next question is for Kiara. Ishan is asking, he's thanking for the valuable review and uh, opinions. Thank you, Ishan, for the question. And it's for Kiara, how to cost such a website for clients? So not how much it costs, but how do you cost it? You know, how do you actually break it up in terms of how do you charge your clients? Hmm. That's interesting question. It's always so difficult. Um, well, um, one thing to think about it is how much money will they do from my website? <laughs> so, and how much the percentage I would like to have out of it. So that's one way to go. And of course, this is not obvious for every client, but let's say you have a client that actually could pay really well uh, or could pay well. And depending how much he inherits through your website, probably you can have an idea how much your work is worth. Um, I mean, that's one way. Or then, if we want to go to what I need to put on the paper, and uh, it's uh, about the time you're gonna spend in to do the search, time you're gonna make in reviewing the website and the different wireframes. If you're doing wireframes, the cost is different from just designing directly. I always do wireframes. So again, add this part into uh, the, uh, the cost estimation. And otherwise, all the research about images, cutting them, um, curating the images and uh, lowering so they are good for the web. Um, other way that I put is, uh, and we always forget, especially designer, is about the, um, um, sorry, meetings. How many meetings are you going to have inside the specific um, uh, project? And maybe you want to have a very specific date so that people actually, that the user, sorry, the client actually knows when uh, is going to meet you how many times. So you don't have to pop into a meeting, an emergency meeting. I mean, keep some extra hours there too, but just put a minimum amount of uh, meetings you want to have with the client. And on a minimum amount and maximum amount, sorry, of changes you allow into a specific page or part of the website, because this could be very costly as well. Sometimes they say it's just a tiny difference and then you're like spending hours on the website. So consider that too on your website. So um, hourly rate is one way to go. But again, I, I follow a very nice uh, tutorial from um, um, uh, the future and and I mean, he was talking about the fact that it's, uh, you always have to think that probably you always charge less than the project's worth. So you will have to think how much money probably that user would do, the client would do with your website, with a very good website, with a very performant and very well done website. He probably will make a lot of money. He will probably sell a lot of products. So you want to be part of that winning uh, coin right so think also on that side um it's a very t difficult topic and actually you find me very not unprepared but it's always difficult to talk about money especially for it's designers a live show. it's a live show kiara <laughs> Come, question comes in we put them up and uh, i think you answered it brilliantly and and you're right this could be this could be a talk this could be a talk just how to budget how to cost it how to convince your clients to spend time on these marketing sites and uh, I think it's there is a, there is a content and discussion for for this topic, and I actually think there's a lot of good questions in the in the chat on uh, on YouTube, and I hope the team behind the scenes is taking notes of them and maybe bringing them up in the next shows because we're running out of time. We can't keep going forever. Not that it's eleven o'clock for me. That doesn't matter. I would still keep going, <laughs> but I value your time. And uh, so yeah, the time's up. No more questions. But as I said, hopefully the team is taking notes and writing them down for next time. And before we will wrap it up, 
we of course need to mention one of the next webinars, one of the next ne next live developer jury website reviews, which will be hosted by Luis Enrique Bizarro, Victor Luis Costa, and hosted by Bruno Ari Arizio. And it's in Portuguese. So all the Portuguese fans or Brazilian fans and everyone who speaks Portuguese, you can be looking forward to this show on November 5th. And you need to convert the time zones for your time. I don't even know what 12 p.m. for Sao Paulo time will be for me, but definitely check it out. I know it will be a great show. I know Victor Luis Costa is a very talented front-end developer and he's done some amazing websites in the past, some websites of the day and I'm sure website of the month too, really good. And I'm sure this show will be perfect. So make sure you tune for that. And if you don't want to miss it out, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the future episodes or replay of this one. If you came later, of course, you can always subscribe and get notification about new content. So thanks for your time. It's been longer than we expected. It's been more than an hour, hour and 10 maybe, but hopefully it was useful conversations and hopefully you have some takeaways from it. Thanks a lot for your time as well to my two special guests. Thanks, Kiara, to being a great guest on the show. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for hosting us and our time, both me and Dennis. Dennis, it was a pleasure to meet you finally. I always follow your agency and I love the work you do. So now is the time to tell that. And Jean Chin, thank you so much for your work. And I hope you're going to submit more websites, more projects, so that we are going to have a lot of fun reviewing them. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice evening for you. Nice afternoon, Dennis. And Perfect. all Thanks, good. Dennis, again. <laughs> For you as well, greetings to Russia and uh, thanks for your valuable insights on the project. Thank you, Kiara and Peter. It, it was a pleasure for me to be here with you. Uh, we had some really great time. Uh, I, I, we had some fun. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, thank you to Jin Chi. Sorry if I spelled it not right. Uh, this is was really amazing website uh, and it was pleasure to talk about it uh, the whole hour with these guys uh hello to russia uh, uh privet 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 so, privet yasu and <laughs> of course as i said thank you everyone for watching and if you enjoyed the show don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and also leave some comments on the under the youtube video so we can improve for future these shows are here for you and uh, if you don't give us any feedback then we don't know what to improve so let us know what you think about today's episode and we'll catch you in the next one.